Hello, friends, and welcome to World Build With Us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferty, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Daniel Quinn and Courtney Staples. On today's episode, we have a brand new prompt from a brand new patron. But before we get into that, we always want to remind you that if you want us to build your world, you can always go to our website, worldbuildwithus.com, where you can click the link, follow the instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on YouTube, where you can go ahead and subscribe, listen, like, comment, all that good stuff, whenever you want, whenever you feel like it. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Let's World Build, or if you want to come and talk to us more directly, we're on Discord with a link for that in the description of this very episode. And of course, if you're feeling particularly generous, like our newest patron, Ewan Matthews, then you can go to our Patreon and in return, you'll get access to sweet, sweet patron-only goodies like two episodes for your prompt instead of one. You will get access to the Aphid Lounge, which is a patron-only podcast that we do roughly once a month. And you will also get access to Too Hot for Broadcast, among other benefits. So if you're feeling particularly generous or just want to give us a tip to say thank you for the work that you do, go ahead and pop on over to our Patreon. Give us a little bit of money. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's dive right into today's prompt. Again, this is from our newest patron, Ewan Matthews, who's also never submitted a prompt before, so I'm particularly excited here. The prompt is, I've been listening for over a year and just joined the Patreon. Thanks for all the joy and wonder. I hope this prompt is moody and open enough. This is the story of Palimpsest, city of old gods, older texts, and dangerous new whispers. Tenet number one, language will get you far in Palimpsest, so speak carefully and never underestimate the power of a dead tongue. Number two, the city's economic and magical hegemony is based upon slime molds, the most valuable being living ink. And number three, gods stalk the streets of Palimpsest, both erratic and organized, locked in an age-long power struggle. Okay, this prompt has me very excited, and I'm very excited to see what we get into because, oh boy, there's some evocative language in there. I'm very, very down to see what happens. So, Courtney, why don't you start us off this time? Courtney, where are you starting us off with your first tenet? All right. Uh, to start with, I'm taking the power of a dead tongue very literally. Son of a um, bitch. You too? Me, okay, you too. Let's, all right, let's, see, let's see where we go with it, Courtney. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, mine is that the tongues of dead people can be used in some way linguistically. I'm not positive how that looks, but it could be having one gives you the power to speak and understand the languages that that person spoke or lets you literally speak in their voice or something along those lines. God... Damn it, Courtney. <laughs> how are we so how okay have we just been doing the podcast for too long have we just simply been friends for too long where yeah. we're doing a mind meld thing <laughs> here because i i also had something very similar in mind mm. where it's not just like the literal dead tongue i wanted like entire bodies to be carried around like almost like a semi-currency of some kind <laughs> okay. right? yeah so you'll have like corpses or undead walking with you as a kind of thing. And I also had this idea that beyond just speaking a dead language and speaking a mystical tongue, uh, I had this idea of like a, a kind of dead chant, right? So like there's mm -hmm. like a, a musical aspect to it as well, perhaps, or maybe it's just kind of like a, a ritualistic chanting of some kind, but that's, that's also my first tenet because yeah, sure. <laughs> why not? I guess. <laughs> So, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about this, I suppose. Um, what did you have in mind, like, when when the power of the dead? Because, again, we both love the idea of the dead tongue, right? Mm -hmm. So what about that was so compelling to you? Uh, I think for me, it was especially focused on the language. Since yeah. That seems to be a big focus of this prompt. And just the idea of tongues being so, like, high value. Um, and I could picture, like, grave robbers sneaking into cemeteries to cut out the tongues of dead people that they want to either you know use their language or mimic mm -hmm. them in some way and it just creates all these implications for like how 
uh, funeral rites are done and oh yeah that whole yeah. process and yeah i just i want to see how it develops as we as we go so there you're saying they're they're literal tongues that the people have, yep. have literally spoken the languages it's the some impression that's been left in their very mouths for him having spoken these languages mm -hmm. yeah it's like something about the power of language is mm -hmm. living in their their tongues even after death that's pretty neat yeah <laughs> no, i just wanted to make sure i understood it yeah yeah no i agree with you completely that sounds really cool uh, like imagine, imagine that it's like one word or one phrase that's left on your tongue as you die or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Something that's like imprinted upon your immortal soul, like through the body in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something having to do with whether it's like the last words that you spoke or words or phrases that you use commonly in your life, they like linger on in a stronger way Yeah, somehow. Yeah, if if we were doing a comedy setting, everyone would have a catchphrase, but I'm glad that we're not going in that direction. <laughs> <Not> so, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, we've got another bazinga. Throw it on the oh, pot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, with yours, like I, I feel like mine is more focused specifically on the tongue, whereas yours is more the whole body that can be used yeah. for other things. Well, I, I'm I'm just thinking about this like through imagery. In that, like, yes, you could have the physical tongue itself, or maybe you have, like, a batch of skulls or heads that are undead in some way that are able to talk, right? And then, of course, to go even further, you would have a cadre of, like, zombified or undead, like, people who are able to speak in some way. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe there's, like, kind of uh, gradations of it. So maybe the more complete the body is, the more, um, not fluent, but maybe more eloquent we're talking about here mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah I, I i didn't really think about it beyond that because i'm like dang that's a cool idea and then courtney went and took the same idea that i had so <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> yeah yeah so considering that we already knocked out our first tenant daniel why don't you start us off with yours what's your first tenant we're working with here um, the concept of palimpsest being that it's something that's been written over and has, mm -hmm. you know, over time has changed. Um, I thought perhaps the city can reflect that. So the tenet is that the city is built on top of an older city that's been forgotten. Oh, oh that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you got one that ties into that too, Courtney? Kind of, yeah. Um, because we just recently watched the movie As Above, So Below, which oh, takes yeah. place oh, yeah. mostly in the Paris catacombs. and Highly so recommended by Daniel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Not like perfect by any means, but it was a very strong horror flick, I would say. Yeah. And very French. <laughs> There's some French, yeah. Um, I mean, it's in Paris, it's got to be very French. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, Daniel, I do like that a lot. And like, how many layers did you imagine? Has the oh, bottom yeah. been discovered yet? Or are people still working through it? No. That's an interesting question. I don't know. I didn't think of like how many. Like at first mm -hmm. I thought there was only the one. But when you say multiple, there might be many layers. Because that would be interesting as you, you know, if you have an ancient text where it's been written over a bunch of times and you're finding still older languages below it. It yeah. could be neat if you're thinking of layers of mm -hmm. depth with the city too. Yeah. And I think that also ties into this concept of dead people carrying the languages on them, because then mm -hmm. the digging for bodies is a digging for knowledge as well. Mm -hmm. I love when a simple question asked by one of us becomes like, no, that's how it is now. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause like I, that's, that's what I want to jump onto. I'm like, that sounds so fucking cool. I want it to be like, not, not, not to a comical degree, not to like a Monty Python, like we built a castle on top of the swamp and then it fell over. So we built another one. Yeah. But like, I love the idea that it's not just about being built on top of, it's also about like, you know, to be scribbled over, to be written upon, right? Like there's, there's something where it's not just, yes, there's that element where there's the city and the under city. But I can't help but imagine that there is a covering of something as well. So maybe it's like there are um, buildings that were built and then uh, a larger building used that as the framework or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, I feel like that it's not just about the mystery that's underneath the city, but in the city as well, as in like between the buildings or in 
you know, like there's the facade of the building and then there's another building inside of that. So it's like nesting dolls. Right. Yeah. I like that imagery a lot, like picturing a semi-modern building, like a large building and you walk mm-hmm. into it and it's like almost like a little town in itself. A oh, couple yeah. of like old houses there with like the streets still there and stuff. But yeah. other things built on top of those. That's cool. That's that's really cool. Like I love the idea of using like buildings as like a foundation for newer modern buildings. So like as you travel in certain directions, it's almost like a history lesson. Mm-hmm. And and to be even more clear about that, it's not just a history lesson in terms of architecture, but it tells a story of like empire perhaps or like cultural mm-hmm. change as well. Like that yeah. in and of itself is really fucking cool. And there may be um I was just listening to I think it was on NPR about um was it what was the movie? The game show on NPR? Well, wait, wait, don't tell me. I'm not sure. I it was, do it was, love, wait, wait, don't tell me. So, yeah. Yeah, it was about, um, uh, yeah, I think it was. It was about, uh, what are they called? Den, dendritol, dendritologist? I forget the word. It's someone who studies the rings of trees when you cut them. Ooh, um, yeah. Like a weird, it sounds like dendrites for like brain connections, but it has to do with the rings. But that makes me think, because um, in that episode, they're talking about how they were able to determine that at this particular ring of the tree, there was a hurricane that hurt its its lifespan, right? So yeah. I wonder, too, like, when you're thinking about the layers of the city, if there's historical facts you could surface. And I wonder if perhaps um, there's some kind of devastating event that mm-hmm. occurs and causes a leveling of the city and that you can learn this by studying unearthing layers of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great because you can also look at like the material they're using during these periods of construction to kind of gauge how technologically advanced or, you know, like where they were in terms of like a a history, right? Like, I'm not sure if I brought this up on the podcast yet, but did I, have I ever told you that they recently found the lost recipe for Roman concrete? Have I talked? Oh, about really? That? No. Yeah. So for literal thousands of years, we didn't understand or know how and why Roman concrete was better than the stuff that we currently have. Right. So we had no idea. Like it, it self heals. It is more durable than anything that's modern in terms of concrete. And they recently found out why that is. It, it's it's something to do with like the mixture that they have allows for expansion and recovery in terms of like their pockets inside of it and it's something oh. to do with the material and so that little key feature like shows like oh that civilization was remarkably advanced and then something happened where that formula was lost and now all of a sudden you have more brittle uh mm-hmm. and less durable material overall and like i love that like you can see that in palimpsest as well like that that is like an indicator of oh yeah, there we go. The material that you're using is different, right? The name is Dendrochronologist. That's the word. That sounds dope. Also, I feel like you could say Dendrochronomancer and you have the same fucking feel. You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) actually, hold on, wait a minute. Did uh, history magic, is that now a thing somehow? I I think (laughs) I might be changing my second tenet to make that more of a thing. Anyway. Anyway, uh, this is great. I'm so excited about this already. Like, I love this idea. So, Courtney, hit us with your second tenet. What do you got for us? I actually want to go back to Daniel's tenet because yes, him, yeah, okay. him bringing up the uh, the tree rings makes me wonder if the city is like a circular shape um, with these sort of concentric rings. And perhaps it's mm. in the form of a, a maze or a labyrinth in some mm. way. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like okay, I, I want to build on top of that as well, because mm-hmm. if we're looking at this like a building on top of a building on top of a building, so it's like multiple layers of like labyrinthine like structure and stuff like that. I can't help but imagine that the circular shape isn't just like a mimicry of a tree. But in my brain, I'm imagining, is this like a giant summoning circle of some kind? And like mm-hmm. only the ancient of the ancient structures reveals that like now it's kind of like more of a vague tree shape or a vague circular shape. And yes, it's still labyrinthine, but it actually covers up the kind of um, magical uh, rune shapes that the original buildings might've had, you know, 
it makes me think of um kind of like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Hellmouth situation. So oh, and it yeah. also seems to speak to the source of the prompt is that the original city was built um either in arrangement to be a pattern that it is a summoning mm-hmm. circle or something. Mm-hmm. And over time, that pattern's been effaced because it's been built on top of. But right. that the very foundation of it serves a purpose magically, and that it is writing like its its actual structure is a is a message. Yeah, mm. it's, it's kind of like okay. Imagine that we took like uh, Stonehenge and then just built on top of it and around it, right? Exactly. But yeah. but on a massive scale, I think that's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Damn it! Damn it! That's cool. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay. Now we find a way to bridge like the tongues of the dead, physical tongues to yeah. that, which will be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Oh, this ah, I love I love it when we get a prompt and we're immediately like, yes, this is what we're going to do. Like we're like, I am hype as fuck about this already. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, Courtney, are you ready for tenant two? I am, yes. So this one is heavily inspired by the book Annihilation. And it's that one of, the, <laughs> one of the gods here is a roaming poet who uses their slime molds to write stanzas across the walls of the city, especially mm-hmm. down in the catacombs. No one has yet figured out what their poem is truly saying. And most people believe that this god has gone mad. Mm. That's really cool. Now, when you say that they're writing it in mold, is it like actual, like a black mold type thing, like a literal fungus of some kind, or? Well, I was basing it on um, the second tenet, the uh... right, the slime molds, yeah, yeah, the slime molds one. But, but what I'm suggesting is that if they're like a catacomb dweller, they might want to write it in literal fungal mold, you know, rather than like a slime mold, or it could be something in between those two. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was picturing maybe something that faintly glows or is mostly visible under certain lighting conditions or Mm. it's something that like to really fit in with the name of the city um can like fade over time but never Mm. truly goes away perhaps so for example uh would we then take some of the cantors of the dead and maybe that's what reveals it so you need like a cadre of undead to sing and that will illuminate the text in some way Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because that's where my brain immediately goes, where it's like, yeah, no, that sounds cool as shit. Like we can we can have it so you can bring like your your wandering undead chorus along with you and reveal the secrets of the city. And obviously that's only parts of it, right? Like there there's other ways because the the only Mm -hmm. thing that makes a mystery really lame is there's only one solution and like that's the only thing you need. So, yeah, I, I think it'd be way more interesting if we take like that as one concept that we can run with. And then there's other ways to uncover the mysteries throughout the city as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of like um, something about resonance or like echoing that the sound waves bouncing off of this stuff reveals it in some way. Um, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it could be other stuff too. Um, like, you know, it's like phases of, of, moonlight or something mm, that it gets mm. exposed to and shines in a certain way things like that sure i i'm surprised you didn't go with your immediate go-to which is blood sacrifice you know yeah like, yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wanted to switch it up get away from blood a little bit wow wow who who is this new queen? <laughs> If we're talking about ways to activate things, um, and I'm also thinking about your your undead, um, I'm wondering if there's a spin on that. And my thought is, you know, if we have people collecting tongues like from dead bodies, what if in order mm. to read the language um, or activate it, you have to like cut off the tongues of the living and attach the dead tongues? Ooh, kind of, the kind dead of aren't really horrifying. Yeah. yeah, they're not really undead, but they're undead in the sense that they carry a dead tongue, like literally. Oh, man. and it transforms them somehow the yeah. imagery of that is like you you just see who what looks like a regular person and then as mm-hmm. they speak there's like a black lolling tongue in their mouth yeah like, and then maybe they have other oh. features because of that yeah 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 oh that's good daniel that's really good holy shit yeah, that's very disturbing all like speakers of the dead or something you know mm. yeah 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 oh, i like man. it okay um also you going back to the blood thing like reading the second tenant again um slime molds 
the most valuable being the living ink. Maybe maybe this god's ink is its own blood that it's writing with. Oh, oh uh, there we go. We saved it. We, yep. we got blood magic yeah. in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so wait, so wait, that's like the god that bleeds then? Like that is like its blood and that's what the most valuable version of it. I mean, that actually makes sense too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's, if like that needs to be the only kind of living ink, but I mm-hmm. think that that is what that particular god uses. Is Is god blood like kind of, what living ink is so it's um, not just that particular god but like a panoply of gods i don't know i, I think there's two things there in the prompt that i almost want to take less literally is one is god sure. and then two <laughs> is living ink i don't know what would be considered sacred or divine in this sort of setting because <laughs> he says god stock the streets um right you know, my first thought without before any of this, any of the largest conversations happened was like, you know, kind of a Greek Olympian setup where you have rival uh, pantheons, right? Politically, sure. that makes sense. Because he says political, I think that word's in there too. Sure. But where we're going in this now, I'm thinking something less, um, like less larger than life. Yeah on the streets would make more sense so i don't know what gods i'm like it's it is cool i think that we have these sort of undead things wandering around which like mm-hmm. i like what you said like a chorus of these people helping someone read it because it's like mm-hmm. people who may have willingly or unwillingly had their tongues cut out and now they've been transformed in some way but having gods wandering around the streets i think that takes it to another level that's i don't know if we're there you know yeah, I was taking gods in, yeah, less like the Olympian throwing lightning bolts mm-hmm. everywhere, more like these sort of unknowable immortal figures who like have reasons for doing things that we can't really comprehend mm. um, and who, you know, interact with the mortals, but don't always, they don't always play nice and they sort mm. of have their own goals in mind and probably communicate in ways that we don't get, like the roaming one that uh, is writing their epic poem across the city. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I even wonder if giving them like supernatural power is even going too far. Like I'm wondering, you know, does God mean something else to them? Like, mm-hmm. for example, say you were in some ancient city and you have like a Jewish golem or something that's perceived as a God. Like now you have something that's technically mundane, but it's mm-hmm. perceived to be godlike. So I'm wondering if this guy is there something about him that makes him seem like a god and so uh, or sacred? Okay. You know what I mean? That way we're not literally having immortal magical beings wandering around and it's still in the Sure. Mm-hmm. So so I actually I think I might have uh an interesting kind of way to to square this because originally one of my tenets is based on the gods and it was I wanted their power to derive not from belief or faith but something else and I was leaving that something else kind of open and I think you guys kind of inspired me just now. Because if this this palimpsest is all about the secrets of palimpsest, so why don't we have the gods be secret keepers? Like they know some key uh, factor of the city. There's something they know a secret about palimpsest itself that is foundational that gives them immense kind of power. And I don't necessarily mean like crackling with arcane energy, but some kind of power that is tied into the secrets of the city itself. And that is why they are quote unquote gods. It's because they know a lot about something in the city about a secret. I mean, maybe that's the answer. Maybe Courtney's person, right. And your undead chorus people, they're the same thing. Like the people who are the gods, quote unquote, are the ones who cut their tongues out and put the dead tongues on themselves. And they, mm-hmm. therefore they have power to speak things. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that know the secrets, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're one of the same. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that works because like the idea of um cutting out your own tongue and replacing it, like not a lot of people are probably gonna <gasps> do that. That's sort of a drastic mm-hmm. thing to do. So I feel like you have to be a very particular kind of person mm-hmm. to go through mm-hmm. with that act. And then they have the secrets, literally, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but obviously we don't know what those secrets are yet because we've yeah. only had the prompt for like the power now. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it simplifies things, right? Now we're not dealing with three different factors; we're dealing with just the one, right? And it ties mm-hmm. in your your slime person, mm-hmm. and it also is your secret cult, and it brings mm-hmm. in like the supernatural undead, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I mean, the undead themselves, they could be, you know, the quote unquote followers or acolytes of the god. Right. And that's just, that's just what they call them. It's kind of like a twisted uh, version of faith and religion where it's like, oh, yeah, I am a speaker of the dead. And these are my cantors. Right. These are my this is my chorus, if you will. And those are the ones that they're they're the faithful, even though they're not actually like capable of producing faith or belief in the God themselves. Right. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is, like, take a step out, like, make the the God the one who decided to cut his tongue out and put it in no, his tongue. Yeah. No, I'm agreeing with you, yeah. Oh, okay, but, okay. but that's the living person that's doing that. And the the undead that are then singing in and, and aid to these gods are also, like, the believers, quote unquote, right? Like, you have the God themselves, and then the undead are their followers, their worshippers. I guess I'm saying they're the, they're the same. Like, unless you mean, like, the god cuts his tongue out and replaces it, and so does his followers? Is that what you mean? No, I'm saying that, I'm saying that the, the followers themselves are... So I was never under the assumption that when you cut your tongue out and replace it with a dead tongue, that you're undead, right? That, that was not my assumption. My assumption is that you're a living person who has a dead tongue in your mouth, and that grants mm-hmm. you some magical power, right? right. Yeah. But then those who follow you are undead right they are they are like zombified or they are perhaps sentient in some ways but they are far more limited in scope and ability and honestly they might even just be like items oh. that the the god is using could they be the ones who now don't have tongues like so if if you're this god that has replaced your tongue with the dead and you're collecting tongues could the undead be the ones whose tongues you removed Oh, like they're they're like placeholders in some ways. So you're so wrong like, now. Yeah, your chorus. Yeah, 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 yeah. That works really well. So like okay. you swap tongues based on what you need at the time. Yeah, maybe you can <laughs> replace it. And so that's their their song, or quote unquote, is is through you, but it's they're yeah. beholden to you because you have their tongue. It, so okay, and, and this will probably depend on you know God per God. I mm-hmm. imagine that there's at least one faction that they actually sing in unison to produce the effect. But yeah. again, we can we can differentiate between the gods themselves. I think that's an interesting way that we can, in fact, differentiate between those gods as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm down. This is great. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so I, ga- I gave you my second tenant. So why don't we move on to uh, Daniel? I think you're the only one left, right? What What's your second tenant? Um, I just had that a very important slime mold is missing. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so the most valuable one is living ink, but that doesn't necessarily make it the most important, right? Or he said that it was just a important one, not the mm-hmm. right. One. Yeah, right, right, right. So, but that's what I'm thinking is like valuable doesn't necessarily mean important because you can have something that's incredibly valuable, but isn't necessarily uh, important. You know what I mean? And vice versa. Mm. Like water is incredibly vital and important, but it's not very expensive. It's not valuable. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just trying to think about what it could be. Yeah. Like, what do we want to talk about? Because if the city's economic and magical hegemony is based upon slime molds, what's missing from the slime molds themselves? My suggestion here too, is that something has been stolen. Mm -hmm. Stolen. So does that mean that the there is a lack in the city, that there's something missing from the city itself as a result of this thing being stolen away? I mean, what do these inks do? Mm. The prompt suggestion, of course, like well, it's implicit suggestion because it's called palimpsest, is that it has to do with writing things, but mm-hmm. we don't seem to have gone that direction. So so um I mean, not yet I, anyway. I mean, underneath we know that there's that one being writing stuff but mm-hmm. are there other inks because it's suggesting here that their whole economic system is based on these things right yeah or it could be something that fuels magical powers um or something yeah. that something much more mundane like just a food source or purifying water or something like mm-hmm. that yeah, I suppose that's a really great question we should ask, right? Like, what is, uh, why is it important? Why is this thing that is gone, that's missing, important? And and to what is it important? Is it a light source? Is it, as Courtney said, just like a food source or a water source? Like, 
and if it's based in like slime or slime molds, I feel like that also helps kind of restrict us in terms of what we're considering here. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading out slime molds because <laughs> they have little or no fossil history, which is interesting. Um, considering that means that they don't leave much of a record. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. By the way, I'm just thinking, I'm like, okay, so the living ink is incredibly valuable, right? That's what we've established. Mm-hmm. Is the living ink what animates the kind of like undead tongue holders of the gods? Oh, like you have to write on them with uh, with this mold stuff and that gives them mm-hmm. life somehow? Right. So, so they're almost like a walking spell book in some ways as well. Yeah. Yeah. It says slime molds have similarities with neural systems and animals. Um, so it could be that the use of them in that way to animate the dead has to do with the fact that it gives them a neural network. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So are we living in a city that is lacking memory, which is why everything's written, which is why everything is written over and over again, and why history and archiving and all that stuff is so important? Mm-hmm. Interesting. With the neural pattern thing, I was also thinking, like, what if that was a way to communicate with people across the city? Kind of like a a messaging or telephone type network, but that has since been removed somehow or stolen. Hmm. Yeah, instant transmission communication is massively important and vital. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad one. Well, it also says economic and magical hegemony. Right. Mm Hmm. Hmm. I mean, like I said before, it could be like the source of some sort of magical power. Mm-hmm. What, um, what, I guess we don't know what the city is. That's the problem. Right. <laughs> and Mariasa says that the, these beings that stalk the streets, which so far we've established are these tongue replacers, are both erratic and organized, and they're right. locked in a power struggle. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think it's okay if we take the city and define it by what it lacks though. Right. Like I feel like that can help us shape the, the look and history of the city pretty well. Mm. You know what Mm. I mean? Hmm. Another idea is that the slime mold that's missing is some sort of drug that people would ingest to give them some sort of power. Mm. Or maybe it's just the drug trade is how it uh, affects the economy. Oh, well, maybe. Okay, so there's a few things on the table. There's memory, there's a drug, there's uh, a neural network of connections. The only, my only danger there is like I, I do think memory is tantalizing, interesting, mm-hmm. but um, they might take it in a direction we're not expecting. But at the same time, memory does speak to forgotten layers, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so it might make sense. So those are three things we have there. I think they, they have connections between them. Mm-hmm. And what if it's something that you ingest to relive history, like relive mm-hmm. past memories of the city? Okay. That could be something like to, to see a certain, to know of a certain layer of it somehow. Yeah. And we also have at the very basis of this, a, a rune, a pattern at the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The original. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and maybe, okay. Uh, Cause you were talking about, you know, figuring out what's missing that, that was just obviously my tenant, but mm-hmm. maybe the drug thing could be a, a long because the power struggle, maybe there's maybe there's a slime mold that these uh, quote unquote gods are secretly struggling over that they want, and that's mm. missing. It's, it's been stolen. Yeah the the thing that I'm concerned about regarding like drugs and stuff like that is that that aspect sounds very familiar to me to the city on the edge of the end that we did because ingesting memory also played a pretty oh, big right. part in that setting. So. Mm-hmm. I, as much as I love the idea, I'm like, I'm a bit wary to mm-hmm. retread that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Damn it. See, this is the problem is that we like the idea, but we're like, oh, we're, 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 it's not even like, like a writer's block. It's like, damn it. What do we, cause we want it to be evocative, right? We want it mm-hmm. to be thematic. And if it's something that the city is, is lacking is it is stolen from them. Well, Maybe we go back to what you were saying about the Romans. I can keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Like, this city has been built 
many, many times over many layers, right? Mm -hmm. And the Romans, they had a formula, like you said, to do things very efficiently with that particular kind of cement. Um, maybe these slime mold, the slime molds are essential to its economic and magical hegemony because it's literally what the city's built with. Like it's a type of mold, like a slime mold that grows and that's how you ah. build it. And mm. without it, you can't continue to build the city. Like you can't extend yeah. it. Okay. Love that idea. Yeah. I love the idea that for the first time, Palimpsest is experiencing a period of stagnation. Mm -hmm. So what I would then ask in return or as a follow-up is how is that causing strife within the city? How is that a tension point within the city itself? Why does Palimpsest need to continually grow? Okay. We go back to the secret history. We know that every so often the city is leveled and that because we know there are layers to the city and this has something mm -hmm. to do with its foundations so perhaps the power struggle is there is a coming leveling and they won't have the ability to rebuild another layer. Mm. Okay. Okay. What what you're suggesting to me there is that there is an apocalypse level event where the city itself is wiped out entirely? I think maybe the sort of devastation that happens, whatever this is, you know, like you were, we were saying, built, even buildings are built on top of others. You know, right. like imagine like an earthquake happens and we know it's going to happen. And we want to prepare for it. And we need to, we know we're going to have to rebuild on top of the remnants, you know? So perhaps this event occurs or mm. it's being discovered that it occurs. And now there's not the capacity to survive it. Could be related to the fact that it might be a giant summoning circle and whatever it mm -hmm. is meant to summon yeah. causes this. Oh, oh, I like that a lot, actually. I like the idea that, it's directly tied into the secret history of the city itself. I think that right. is where we, we need to find the key. That's where we need to like focus our attention. And it brings in Courtney's um, mad God too, because he seems mm -hmm. to be going down to look for information, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, maybe it's the formula that's been stolen or the method somehow mm -hmm. of making the slime. Cause perhaps you have to grow these slimes. So yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Because if you're losing that, then there's now a finite amount of the, the currency in circulation. Right. Which means that anytime currency is destroyed or if there's a, an applicable use, if it's used, then you're using it. So it becomes more and more dwindling as a supply. Mm -hmm. it, and it doesn't even necessarily have to mean all mold is now like no longer replicatable. Maybe it is um the living ink that is no longer replicatable that's the formula that's been gone or maybe it's several slime mold formulas that have been gone and so that is akin to lost technology lost language you know like stuff like that that's uh, daniel i think that works entirely i i like that idea a lot mm -hmm. courtney what do you think you're not a fan you hate it you want to dumpster this idea tell <laughs> us why <laughs> no i i like it um so it's basically like the the formula for making this mold that infuses like structural integrity, basically. Mm. Oh, I was I was suggesting that the ability to create mold at all, that formula has been gone or severely reduced. So it's not just about the integrity of the uh, buildings. It is like the function of currency within the city is no like imagine if we lost the formula of how to make money right imagine if we mm -hmm. lost the ability to make money and now all of a sudden we only have a certain amount of currency within circulation that that changes things entirely right like it, like maybe bartering becomes more important or maybe there's a greater importance placed on the remaining money that's left over you know something like that so you're saying all slime molds I, I'm, I'm suggesting that we limit which slime molds can be replicated. Well, perhaps it's the slime mold for construction. Right. Construction. Yeah. Maybe an enzyme that's added to the mold that makes it be able to make like a cement, like literally mm -hmm. going with the yeah. concept. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I was taking that a step further. So it's not just about construction. It is about like other things as well, because if, if the slime molds themselves are like, where is it? What's the, so the city's economic and magical hegemony is based upon the slime molds. If we suddenly restrict that now that becomes an even greater point of tension. 
it's not just about we can't you know construct our buildings anymore it's also like we are now limited to the amount of magic we can cast so now if we were in a big city and all of a sudden you know like oh yeah they use light spells to turn on the lamps and stuff like that and now that resource is limited they're far less likely to be like frivolously throwing away magic at that particular light source because they have to hoard it just a little bit more because that formula is gone now. So maybe we invert the tenant and say um, to make this possible. So maybe instead of something having been stolen, um, maybe there has been a disease introduced or some kind of debility that's making it impossible to continue to grow molds. Like if that's there's something really weakening cool. or sickening the, the molds, they can't grow. That's really cool. That is a really cool idea. Yeah, because it then it enhances the flavor of this is a living creature. This is a mm -hmm. living biological thing that we rely on. Exactly. And it would affect all of them that way, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. And then and then that leaves us for like mutation and like new generations of mold and stuff like that. There's experimentation. Ooh, like maybe oh, yeah. it's an ancient mold that's been uncovered from below that Ooh. eats the other molds. Mm -hmm. So like a door was opened or something that let mm -hmm. out some bacteria or virus or whatever that started to eat them all. Or perhaps it was deliberately led or spread to certain areas yeah. by some kind of mad god, perhaps, you know, like... It's a hungry, hungry hippo's mold. Yeah, I mean, that is certainly one of the ways <laughs> that it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Okay. Holy shit. Okay. No, that's super cool. Yeah, we got there. We we got there. Great job, Daniel and Courtney. We all did it. That was a team effort. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay. That is all of our tenets. Let's go ahead and go over a recap. Courtney, what was your first tenet? Uh, that the power of the dead tongue is very literal that tongues of dead people can be used to speak or understand languages or communicate with the voice of the dead person or something like that. And that was very similar to mine as well. I mm -hmm. expanded upon that. I'm feeling very satisfied with how that tenant turned out. Courtney, do you feel satisfied as well? Yeah, I, I'd like to see it more in practice next time in terms of like um mm -hmm. like we talked about how these godlike beings can kind of swap out the tongues and stuff from their mm -hmm. followers um but i'm curious like what that looks like in practice basically Ooh, thought just off the top of my head mm -hmm. maybe uh -huh. the speaking of the tongues allows you to control the molds oh uh, interesting see yeah that's really good. I also had the idea in mind that like having the tongues allowed you to read the kind of secret script within the city and the cities within the cities within the cities. So, you know, like I'm imagining that once you go into the labyrinth, that is the, that it is palimpsest, right? You're able to read like arcane text or maybe, maybe you're able to read the mold by speaking it or something. That's like what I mean. That. Like maybe yeah. you can speak to the old molds and yeah. command them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, then, cool. then we're on the same page. Yeah, that sounds dope. I'm I'm down with that entirely. And that's how secrets are learned and kept and traded. Because mm -hmm. it's not enough to know, but it's a you have to actually be able to speak it too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That sounds dope as fuck. I love that. Okay, cool. So that was Courtney and I's first tenant. So Daniel, what was your first tenant? Um, that the city is built on top of older forgotten city. Mm -hmm. Uh, and do you feel satisfied that we've we've nailed that? Yes. Okay. Honestly, I find that to be really exciting. Like, not just that it's there's a city on top of another city, but there's like cities built within the city itself. Like that to me is a really cool mm -hmm. addition to that, you know, kind of fantasy thing. Uh, so, yeah, we, we talked a lot about that. This has been a fucking crazy episode. Crazy fun, by the way, but a crazy episode because mm -hmm. we like bounced all over the place in between tenants. And it's so exciting. So, Courtney, what was your second tenant? Uh, yeah, that was the one that was inspired by the book Annihilation, that one of the god figures here is a roaming poet that uses their slime mold to write across the, the city walls, especially down in like the lower layers of the catacombs. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody's figured out what the poem actually says yet. And most people think that the god is crazy. Uh, and do you feel like that is satisfied in your end? I think so. Like he this God was meant to be sort of a mysterious figure. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that it fits 
in really well with what we've built. Um, mm -hmm. I think we could probably tie its poem into um, maybe the disease that was released mm -hmm. that's killing off the molds or tying into the center of the summoning circle or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does yeah. seem instru as an instrumental actor of some kind. So, mm -hmm. right. well, well, that's why I was suggesting earlier that he's the one who's spreading the ancient mold. You know, like uh, he's the one who either discovered it or he is the one who's like spreading it. You know, the ancient mold that like is killing off the other side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, hold on. Pause for a second here. It's it's called palimpsest, like a scribbling over, a writing over, an overwriting, right? Is that what the ancient mold does? It like it is a it is a strong overriding force. I, th I think metaphorically it, it is a threat to that. So like the the city itself mm -hmm. is written over and written over, but the the past remains underneath it like a palimpsest. But right. this thing threatens to eat through all of it. Right. No. That that. Sorry, I had a dramatic pause there, but. I was going to say, or is it the opposite? Is it an that's eraser? That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think it's an eraser. I think that's yeah. the, the danger is it'll erase the present and the past, you know? Yeah. yeah. And because so much power comes from the knowledge of the past, this threatens both. It threatens everything. It threatens the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, I love the idea of like an eraser slime or, it, yeah, well, okay, there's a lot we can do there, but let's put a pin in it. We're moving on. Uh, my second tenet had to do with the gods themselves. I know that we we're talking about the, the nature of the divine and such. My, my original tenet was uh, the gods themselves don't subsist or are not powered by belief and or faith, but something else. And the fact that we've created the gods who are, you know, based in secrecy or learning something about Palimpsest itself, and that is where they draw their power from. Uh, I'm very happy with what we've done with that thus far. Mm -hmm. um, so Daniel, finish us off here. What do we have for our final tenant? Um, so a very important slime mold is missing, but uh, we inverted this to say that um, the introduction of a slime mold that's bad has made others go missing, basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, that kind of inversion is absolutely, like, it's so fucking cool. I'm such a fan of what we're doing with that. Cause now my brain is like on fire with the things that we want to do with that, mm -hmm. you know, because they're uh, depending on what we have the slime mold function as like it's disruption is so such an interesting way to kind of deal with that, you know? So yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think it was really helpful for you to give that little factoid with Rome. Cause I thought. That was yeah. evocative, you know, as, yeah. as a <laughs> history nerd shit paying off here. All right. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that that does it for uh, the tenets. We just did the recap. So now all we got to do is roll a twist and uh, we go from there. And before we roll our twist, remember, if you're one of our patrons and you want to submit one of the twists to the giant twist list that we have, Please, by all means, go ahead. Even if you've submitted before, we will take the best twist and sometimes the worst and add them to the list. So our twist this time is reverse the roles of the heroes and villains. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Because right now, I don't necessarily see us of having heroes and villains so yeah. i'm excited to see what happens with this one yeah here's a here's a fun fact about slime molds um <laughs> the filamentary structure of insert strange latin name of slime mold forming a network to food sources is similar to the large-scale galaxy filament structure of the universe Ooh. holy shit okay Damn. um wow all right and on that like see See, I'm here for the history facts. Daniel is here for the science facts. And um, I, that's all I got, honestly. So that's going to do it for this episode of World Build with us. That is a massive thank you to our newest patron for this prompt and for your support. You and Matthews, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We had a blast with this prompt. And we'll see you next week for your second part of this prompt. 
But before we get into all that, before we sign off and say goodbye, remember that if you want us to build your world like uh, we did with you and you can always go to our website, worldbuildwithus.com, where you can click the link, follow some instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. We're also on social media on YouTube, where you can go and subscribe, like, thumbs up, bell, uh, other thing. I'm sure I'm sure there's going to be a new one by the time this comes out somehow. But yeah, go do all that fun stuff. Uh, let us know what you think Slime Mold should do in the comments. We'll read it. We'll talk to you. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Let's World Build while that's still a thing. Or if, if you want to come and talk to us more directly, you can always click on our Discord link and chat with us there. Come join the community. Come chat with us. We've got all sorts of fun stuff. We've got general chat. We've got a whole bunch of like settings that our listeners have created and have like massive portfolios that you can go through for all sorts of fun stuff. You can go do that on our Discord. And of course, if you're feeling particularly generous or just want access to our sweet, sweet patron-only goodies, you can go to our Patreon and give us money there. So that's going to do it for this episode of World Build With Us. Remember that we love you very much, and we're going to get through this together. Until next week.